Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. My husband and best friend betrayed me, so I made their downfall public. Now I'm free and they're stuck. I, female 40, my husband Jake, male 42, and my BF Carla, female 39, have all been friends since grade school. We grew up together and kept in touch throughout college and when I began dating my husband as we both went to the same college. Jake and I have been married for 10 years now and for the most part it's been a great marriage. Jake didn't grow up with much and he tends to be very poor with financially planning things out. Kind of a buys first budgets never kind of guy. He does earn a decent amount as a retail manager, but he spends like his entire paycheck needs to be used up. I, on the other hand, grew up in A and my family has a lot of money. I also don't flaunt my wealth, including in front of friends and all my husband. The only help I've taken from my parents is to pay for my college education and to get a STEM job that pays well. I could live a lot more luxurious, but I've always just saved a huge chunk of my money because I want an easy retirement. That means I tend to buy stuff and through coupons. I wear my clothes until they can't be worn and I use an older iPhone instead of the newest model. I also don't expect my parents to leave me all their wealth and I've been very open about telling them that they should donate it to charities in various estates. This has been the main source of friction in our relationship as Jake tends to use our joint savings for these stupid purchases he tries to spew as good for us. Like once he bought a vintage car on impulse as he was driving and saw it on somebody's lawn. He said he was going to flip it and sell it for a profit but the car's just been an unfinished project. Despite this behavior and my repeated confrontations, Jake is great in all other aspects. I have tried to clearly communicate to him that he shouldn't get used to a crazy lifestyle because I'm not going to blow through my savings and well, he doesn't have any. He also recently found out that I won't be expecting an inheritance and he said that it would be a great help for us as a couple. I get where he's coming from since an inheritance from my family would likely be in the millions and he is making points that are like, op, we can never worry about money again and things like that. But the point is, I don't think we or at least I would need it and it would be much better if I went to a better place. Of course, it is entirely up to my parents, but Jake feels like I should actively push for more details on dad's will and how much we'll be getting. Without being too rude, I think that's just trashy and I have made it clear to my family that I would be okay with $5 or $5 million. I have been firm about this and we have hashed and rehashed this issue to death. He hasn't brought it up recently, and I guess I took that to mean that he finally accepted my decision. Throughout this all, Carla has also been a huge part of our lives. She was my maid of honor at the wedding. She works as a contractor and helped me and my husband renovate our house. She also knows a lot about the issues we have had regarding finances and sometimes serves as the voice of reason when I get really mad at Jake and need space. She doesn't take sides usually but makes me see reason and not do anything rashly. Carla also spends a lot of time with us on double dates with her boyfriend Brad. So I guess you could say we're a bit of a package deal. Recently, when I was waiting for my husband to come out of the shower, I saw a text from Carla that went something like you could come over when he's not over. I know that it's weird to snoop, but anyone would after seeing a text like that. I know that Jake uses like the same four passwords for everything, so I tried combinations until it opened. I went through the chats between Carla and Jake and they filled me with so much freaking anger. They'd been sexting and talking about dumping their partners and Carla even proposed being a false witness and making me out to be a psycho when Jake eventually applied for divorce. I had to keep my wits about me despite the pain and betrayal I was feeling, so I sent myself screenshots deleted the messages, and then pretended like I didn't know anything. I was going to wait for another opportunity and collect even more evidence when Jake wasn't around. I also had to figure out a way to tell Brad, because he deserves to know. A couple of days passed, and I pretended as if nothing had happened. I got another chance at looking at Jake's phone and saw that he texted Carla saying that I had ruined his future and that he married the wrong person. Basically, he had been fab with Carla in high school, and I think a big part of his marriage with me was in the hopes that he could control my money or live a richer life. He even had the gall to call me the poor princess. Carla, despite being my Beff, or so I thought, just laughed along with everything he said and even said terrible things about Brad they were also planning on getting Jake to file for divorce and get a substantial sum in alimony with Carla acting as a witness. They're both terrible people, and from what I could tell from the chats, this affair has been going on for about two years. Like before I sent this evidence over to myself, all of this blindsided me because despite Jake's weird attitude toward money, I never thought he could be this heartless. I think I just switched off my brain at this point and began thinking of the best possible way to screw those two over. First, I asked Brad to meet up with me and showed him all the chats. He was also distraught as it was quite a long relationship. I told him what I was thinking of and he decided to join in on my plan. 
We were going to reach out to a lawyer and figure out the most financially crippling divorce settlement that I could manage. With the amount of evidence I had gathered, it wasn't going to be tough to work against them, and they weren't going to expect it either. I had been good at hiding my tracks, so a few days ago Brad and I set up another one of our double dates and brought out all the evidence we had along with my divorce papers. Screenshots of their texts along with my divorce papers. It felt good, really good. They begged pleaded and eventually Carla went into hysterics while Brad just watched on sipping his drink. Someone even recorded the whole thing and it's on the internet forever now. Jake tried to guilt trip me and talked about the good times we had and how he only stooped to this because he wasn't feeling satisfied with my way of living. Instead of talking to me though he decided to go to someone else so he can join Carla in hell for all I care. Now I know I'm not TA for filing for divorce but I do wonder if my behavior afterwards was a little childish. I felt like I was just being spiteful and wasn't processing my hurt in a healthy way. I want nothing to do with Jake and Carla anymore, but was the way I confronted them and kind of wrote Brad into the process too much. Update. Sorry about posting this immediately as the divorce proceedings were still ongoing. Since then, Brad kicked Carla to the curb and he's happily single. Carla has lost a lot of clients because of the video. I've gotten the house and all of our joint assets. I spent it all on kind of irresponsible stuff just to spite him. I could afford to because the money wasn't something I needed. I spent it on my hobbies, clothes, and whatever the hell I wanted. My family has been amazing through the divorce too. It may seem kind of petty, but they've been taking me on a lot of exotic adventures and to fancy places and. I've indulged a little by posting all of this on social media just as a kind of passive-aggressive jive at them. My mutual friends told me that Carla and Jake are now living together in the studio apartment and. Because of the way Jake is with money, they're constantly at each other's throats. I have taken the time myself to be single, though, and I'm enjoying it immensely. Update 2 Jake reached out to me a few days back saying he had made a terrible mistake and wanted to give things another shot. I was very, very cautious about this whole interaction and left him on scene. I had been NC with him for a while, and a lot of our common friends had also cut him off, but I found out from a few who still kept in touch with him that he had been dumped by Carla. Turns out he went too far with his behavior and Carla had had enough. She's moved upstate and started a new business. Jake, meanwhile, is now living alone and has gotten massive credit card debt. A few people who cut him off told me that he had reached out to them before texting me to ask for some money, basically by talking about how sad his life is and trying to guilt trip a few dollars out of them. I've gone through your comments and I know that I was in the right. I can be a little passive aggressive because I'll be frank, this man doesn't deserve any better. So I texted back saying that I was done being his personal ATM and that he had the gall to call me poor prince princess, even though I made three times what he did, just because I didn't blow through my money or tell everyone how much I was making. I then blocked him. Denta at all OP. I am shocked that someone could be so calculating about just using a person like this. You didn't do anything wrong by making the confrontation public or about enjoying your newfound freedom. Denta, but it's kind of weird that you started flaunting money and changing your principles just to get back at your ex-husband. It feels like you were still hung up on the trauma of the betrayal, and I suggest you think about how to move forward. From the way you talk about your relationship with Jake, it's pretty clear that the issue of finances has been a red flag for some time. And it's crazy that you probably wouldn't have divorced him unless you found out about the affair. Next story. I 40 female have four siblings. Between the five of us, my parents have nine grandchildren. While we were at my parents' house for dinner, for the kids to get their presents from them in the middle of handing out their presents to everyone, they gave my nieces Monica and Jill a big box and said that this present was from them and my sister and brother-in-law and it was something they were going to have to share. They opened it up and it was a PlayStation 5. Many of my nieces and nephews were upset and jealous over the girls present, and rightfully so. My parents tried to explain that the girls had already expressed interest in sharing one and that their parents asked for help so. Instead of the girls getting two, three presents like everyone else my parents, put what they would have spent on the girls toward the console, and their parents paid the rest. I called BS on my parents and told them they just showed all the kids who their favorite grandchildren were. My parents said that wasn't true. They didn't spend any more on the girls than they did on anyone else, and if there were big purchases we wanted to get the kids they would have helped in, that would have been their gifts to them. I told them I didn't buy that one bit or else they would have offered to help instead of waiting to be asked, and... More importantly, they wouldn't have gifted it to the girls in front of everyone. Besides, kids don't offer to share things like that. They said that they thought it best to do it there so they could put it into context for all the grandchildren instead of risking the girls saying that they got it from Grammy and Pops. 
We argued about it, and I took my kids and left. My parents have been trying to call me since Sunday to talk, and my husband thinks I should hear them out. One of my siblings is mad at me because now their kids are all upset because they believe me when I called out our parents favoring Monica and Jill now their kids and a mine don't want to go over to my parents' house which is ruining New Year's for them because our parents were going to watch any of the kids that needed babysitting and our parents are upset the kids don't want to go over anymore. I was just advocating for my children but Aida for calling my parents out in front of everyone the way I did. Edit there are other instances of my parents favoring Jill and Monica. They'll give Jill and Monica money for their extracurricular trips and similar things while my brother and I have aired struggling to pay for extracurriculars for our kids before. My parents say and do nothing except tell our kids that they shouldn't give up their hobby sports when we made a decision to pull them out. My parents have also been made aware in the past when one of us was struggling to get a get gift one of our kids really wanted and not a damn thing was said. So no, I really don't believe their B story or excuse that they would have given help if asked. They should have brought it up to all of us if they really were asked to help so we could have had the same opportunity with our kids' gifts. Since they didn't, they should have had the girls open the gift at my sister's house. Not made an entire spectacle of it. Regardless of whether you believe them or not, why TA for doing this in front of the other kids? And I find your reaction completely extreme. You said that sis and brother-in-law asked and your parents said they would have done the same had anyone else asked. So I don't think they're showing any favoritism. Although obviously a feeling of favoritism isn't a one-off thing so no one could really say without knowing how they treat everyone for all the past Christmases and events. Why TA? You've created a scene in front of the children like a child. If your parents are right and they spent as much money on every kid, I have no reason to believe they lied. Your anger is totally misplaced. You threw a fit because your sister and brother-in-law was smarter about their kids present and your years of sibling jealousy showed up and now the cousins are mad at each other. The family won't get together for New Year's. What a mess you've made. You better apologize to everyone and go to therapy to deal with your insecurities. Next story. I live in a that's considered quaint and a popular destination amongst locals during the holidays for our holiday light displays. My home has a little pathway and lawn on both sides, and it's fenced in all around, but it's more of a decorative fence that's wooden and waist high. The issue started when I got a notification on my home camera that someone was moving in my front yard. I work from home so peeped and saw a girl about six or seven running in my yard. By the time I got outside to check it out, the girl had broken some decorations. She pulled lollipop heads off their stands and knocked over one of my reindeer and one of the antlers snapped off. Her mother was just laughing and watching so I ran over and kindly, honestly I swear, asked the mother to grab her kid. The mom got super annoyed and called me a Grinch and said if I didn't want kids playing on my lawn, then I shouldn't put out decorations or leave my gate unlocked. I leave it unlocked so it's easier for the mailman to get in. Her answer annoyed me so I told her to leave or else I'd call the cops. She called me a bitch in front of her kid and left with her. I was so mad I did lock my gate in case she came back. Lo and behold, she returned, and this time I caught her on camera lifting her kid up and over the fence on purpose. I didn't feel like going out and having an argument with the lady again, so I ended up just calling the cops saying there were trespassers on my property. By the time they came, her daughter had trashed some of my inflatables. The cops told her pretty nicely to leave, but the mother got in their faces and started yelling. It caused a bit of a scene and I ended up coming out. The cops asked if I wanted to press charges, but I said no if the lady promised to never come back. A few of my neighbors saw and it's been quite a conversation in my community. One neighbor said I was an a hay for calling the cops, but another said I did the right thing because the same little girl took one of her angel decorations and the mom wouldn't give it back. I do feel bad because the girl cried a lot though so I'm not sure. Dad, your property was destroyed. You took the appropriate measures of nicely warning the mom first, and it didn't work. I'm sure even the neighbor who thought you did the wrong thing would feel differently when the mom end. Daughter decided to make their yard their own personal playground after trashing yours. The fact that the mom lost it and yelled in the face of the cops when they showed up proves that you weren't dealing with someone who could be rational or calm about it. I would have pressed charges. Absolutely, Nta. Da, it's your property. You made it very clear that she wasn't welcome and why. She clearly just wanted to feel like she won, so she went back and let her kid run wild again, just to spite you. You're also not the only one that she's disrespecting like this. If she comes back again, tell the police that you want to press charges. Maybe some actual consequences will teach her how to respect her neighbors. It's a shame that the kid got caught up in it, but that's not your problem. Santa. Our baseline for spreading holiday cheer is allowing kids to destroy our property and the expectation is now that we must lock gates otherwise we are inviting trespassers. Please.
What a nightmare neighbor. In my neighborhood, most don't have locking gates fences. Our holiday decor goes up and no one touches it. No one comes into our property yard without valid reason and we reciprocate in kind. Let any neighbor who calls you an AH know you will happily let that mom know they disagree with you and recommend she unleash her child on their property. Thanks for watching till the end. Wishing you an awesome day. Feel free to drop a comment if you've got more to share. I'd love to hear from you.